So I got this comment on my last video. Stephanie says, I think what us women need is classes on how our menstrual cycles work and how to get pregnant. I really have no idea how this body I've had my whole life even works. Lucky for you, Stephanie, Donald Trump weirdly hasn't messaged me back, so let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Kate. I'm a certified sex educator, and my special interest is the intersection of neurodivergency and how it impacts sex, relationships, and intimacy. I also just want to say for the record that every so often I get compared to Miss Frizzle, and I'm so excited because this is my magic school bus moment, so let's take a tour through the menstrual cycle. Now, before we get into the particulars of anatomy, it's important to note that the menstrual cycle is actually broken down into four different phases. The first is the menstrual phase where your uterus sheds its lining and that's when you get your period. Now, kind of like how some people feel like Sunday is the end of the week and other people feel like it's the start of a new week, so too is the menstrual cycle. A lot of people tend to think of their period as the end of the cycle, but from an educational standpoint, it's technically the first. The menstrual phase tends to last from between one to five days of your period. One, two, I have to write all of this backwards, so I'm doing my best. That's not how you write it backwards. I also think it's important to remember that we are talking in generality. Some people have periods that last for three days. Some people have periods that last seven to eight and even longer if you're cursed like me. The next phase is called the follicular phase. During this phase, your ovaries start preparing eggs for fertilization and estrogen rises in your body. What's also interesting is that the follicular phase runs concurrently to the menstrual phase starting around day one and lasting up until about day 13. The next phase is transition. Ovulation, which is when the egg is released from your ovary and your fertile window opens and maybe or maybe not you get pregnant. This usually happens right around the midpoint of your menstrual cycle. Lastly, but not leastly, we have the luteal phase. Luteal phase is when your body prepares for pregnancy and if it doesn't get pregnant that's when it sort of cycles back around to the menstrual phase. The effects of the luteal phase are also the son of a bitch motherfucker parts of your period like PMS, PMDD, that kind of thing. We hate this bitch. The luteal phase lasts from somewhere around day 14-15 all the way to the end of your menstrual cycle. So much like everybody's favorite K-pop band, Blackpink, you can't have a menstrual cycle without all four members of the band. Jisoo, Jenny, Renee, and Lisa. I don't understand that joke, my sister wrote it for me. So those are the four phases of your cycle, but where and when stuff happens in your body is also really interesting. So let's take a tour through the reproductive anatomy. Much like the internet, your reproductive anatomy is a series of tubes. And so we begin here in the ovaries, which are filled with thousands of undeveloped eggs all waiting for their moment to shine. To buy this many eggs in this economy would cost billions of dollars. Also, fun fact, if you're born with this type of anatomy, you're also born with all of the eggs that you're ever going to have. Our bodies don't make more. So remember our phases from a little bit earlier? During the menstrual and follicular phases, our body sends a message to our ovaries, letting it know that it's time for a couple of eggs to mature. This message is carried by a special hormone called FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone. That took me nine takes. And as those eggs begin to grow, the level of estrogen begins to rise in our body as well. During this time, you might feel a little bit more energized, have a little bit more mental clarity, and generally just start feeling good as those estrogen levels rise. And every month, the egg that is released switches sides. Unless you're like me and you had an ovarian torsion and you only have one ovary, his name is Han Solovary. Our next step on the tour is going to be the uterus, the large, hollow, muscular organ in the center of our pelvis. That's where the baby goes. Each month, your uterus builds a soft, nutrient-dense lining, sort of like prepping a guest room, just in case a fertilized egg makes its way into the uterus. If a fertilized egg makes its way into your uterus, that's where it'll embed itself, providing nutrients and support for early pregnancy. However, if that doesn't happen, the lining will shed out of the vaginal canal, and that's what your period is. So each month, as your body realizes that there's no fertilized egg up in there, uh, your estrogen and your progesterone drops, which causes the shedding, which leads to your period, and then your estrogen levels start rising again as that lining rebuilds itself. Around the middle of your cycle, your body releases a chemical known as LH, or luteinizing hormone. And that's when one of those eggs that has been maturing inside of your ovary is released 
into the fallopian tube and makes its journey all the way around here into your uterus. And this fertility window is when you are most likely to become pregnant. What's also interesting is not only does estrogen peak in our body at this time, but we also get a testosterone bump as well. This results in increased libido and confidence, and generally this is the part of your cycle where you tend to be pretty horny. Our next stop on the tour is actually back to the uterus, because as this egg travels, your uterus starts rebuilding this lining in the hopes that something fertile will get planted there. And this is where we enter the luteal phase, where progesterone starts rising in your body. Progesterone calms the nervous system, but it is also what causes things like PMS and PMDD, cravings, hunger, mood swings, changes, all of that wonderful stuff that we get to deal with. During this time, you might feel tired, bloated, d d angry at the whole fucking world. And so if no fertilized egg reaches the inside of the uterus, that's when our progesterone and our estrogen levels begin to drop. They drop pretty quickly, and that's when the uterine lining begins its shed, which is your period. This rapid drop in hormones can lead to irritability, irrita irri irritability, fatigue, and other symptoms, and the shedding of your lining is what causes things like cramps and lower back pain. One thing that I think is really important to keep in mind is that your cycle isn't just about your period. It's a full body, full brain experience every single month. Learning about your hormones, learning about your anatomy is super powerful, not only because it helps to understand the rise and fall of hormones during our cycle, but it also helps you track when something might be wrong. And obviously, I don't have an infinite amount of time on here, so this is kind of a broad overview, but if you have more questions or you want to know how stuff works in more details, let me know in the comments, okay? It looks like a Pokemon.